Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. <clears throat> Today, we're gonna look at some of the charts and information that Twitter has. So we'll take a look at the posts that I've been retweeting, some things that I've posted on the tweets myself, <clears throat> and see what the Twitter space has for commodity type uh, information. So let's just dive right in uh, and take a look. So first we're starting with spider charts. <clears throat> Looks kind of interesting here. This is um this chart here is the gold spot uh spot price divided by US dollar. So it's gold priced in dollars. We've got this arc coming here. Uh we've got symmetry. That's what we're looking at. The spider's the center of the symmetry. And we can see that this side, if this was the symmetrical side, is similar to this side. So it's basically flipping about the 04 June 21, uh, that I, I would say horizontal axis that you can flip like a book cover. So if you were to look, 47 bars, 46 bars, 179, 179, 222, 229, and we basically have full complete symmetry. Is this where we take off? Possibly. And we also have <clears throat> the distance. From the 200 day moving average, you can see we are increasing in strength with time. Is this the time that we launch? It very well could be. I am a pro gold, silver, platinum uh, bull. And here's just a different charting, another way to chart this stuff. And I thought it was a pretty cool chart. Looking at platinum. <clears throat> Everyone knows I am a big platinum bull. We've got our our distance from the 200-day moving average and a downtrend. We broke that downtrend. We came back and we're riding the top of that that trend line. We've got one, two, three, one, two, three in terms of contact points. We've got the nice dip there. That's the COVID uh, sell-off. And are we going to get this nice little move higher? We're sitting on above a trend line. We're retesting the heck out of this trend line. And this is usually where I like to buy is the retest of these trend lines. Is three the lucky number? You know, I I don't like getting too positive or negative in the short term. I've kind of squandered that out of me. And all I do is I act like a robot saying, you know what, what are, what are my general rules? Trend line breaks, you buy the trend line break. You buy the retest, buy the retest, buy the retest, and that's what I'm doing. And if we get this launch, ratios say we're good, the market conditions show that we're good, that we could potentially head higher here uh, over time. So that looks good to me. So that was platinum. Uh, here's another one. I, I was just kind of posting this. This is about crypto. Uh, is this a arc in the opposite direction where we're rolling over ready to move lower. It's a six-year support line and an inverse arc pivot line. So does this look like we're ready to move lower? Uh, this is Ethereum. All the crypto stuff doesn't look too good. If you look at some of the other cryptos, this is SOL. Well, that one's already further along, and it looks like this thing's diving down, where we could eventually work our way perhaps towards uh, zero. We'll find out. Uh, the distance around the 200-day moving average doesn't look good. It's breaking to the downside. Uh, this doesn't look too good. That's all I'm going to say. And that's all the crypto space stuff. Um, and this is, I consider this to be a function of speculation in the markets and the markets tightening up with commodities. When commodities are plentiful and energy is plentiful, sure, you can speculate on a whole bunch of useless crap. But uh, this here, well, it's all going away, it seems like. The useless CRAP is starting to uh, be removed from the system. And it's being diverted <clears throat> towards the stuff that we do need. Uh, coming on down, yeah, I posted a couple of different spider charts. This one's silver. A couple of bowl-shaped silver patterns, uh, which is the cup and handle, the big cup. And then there's the handle. Uh, one thing that looks very interesting is he put some symmetry lines on here. 158 bar, 158 bar, uh, false breakout, false breakout. Uh, from the downside, false breakout. The upside, false breakout. 
<clears throat> and now we've got a potential false breakout to the downside, perhaps, that is that's occurring right now, which will lead to maybe a higher silver price. Uh, we've also got contact points, basically, um, from false breakout or slightly before it to the false breakout, slightly before it to the false breakout. These are similar in size in relationship to the bar lengths, and it points to a zone that would be a buy point for silver right where we're at today. Uh, so this one looks good. What I really like is that we have an alignment across gold, silver, and platinum that looks like we want to go higher. So that is a good thing on that. Uh, we got here, the unemployment rate is lower now than it, than it was during every month of the 1970s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. <clears throat> Goldman Sachs, renewables are not a standalone solution. Renewables alone can't satisfy the world's energy needs due to intermittency issues, hidden costs, and potential geopolitical considerations. Uh, so if I were to click on this, here's our intermittency issues. <clears throat> Output from renewable sources such as wind and solar is dictated by weather, quite obvious. Uh, utility scale battery economics are currently prohibitively expensive to be solely re relied upon. Fossil fuels <clears throat> are required as a backup source to maintain reliable and consistent energy supply. There's hidden costs and geo geopolitical concerns. Coming to copy, green energy is a hoax. These Germans really deserve what's coming. I uh, hope they get it uh, good and hard. <clears throat> Germany is rationing hot water, dimming its street lights, and shutting down swimming pools as the impact of the energy crunch begins to spread from industry to offices, leisure centers, and homes. Uh, this is the massive uh, ISHS inverted shoulder head shoulder in the URA versus uranium spot. It will complete the base and we're off to the races. And shoulder, head, shoulder with the neckline, and then we'll eventually work our way higher. And this here is what I consider to be a huge opportunity. And the opportunity only comes once every decade or two, uh, maybe even three or four decades. Uh, it really depends. 1970 to 2007 was a pretty long time frame for your rain bull market to come. We are lucky to have setups like this right in front of us, uh, investors. That's what I'll say. Uh, I'm telling you, in my <clears throat> over two decades of experience, something really feels off about the past two weeks action in oil markets, almost as if something's been going on, like there's some sort of manipulation in it, is I think what he's alluding to. Something isn't normal. Uh, it's a total myth that we need the rates to go lower to have rising precious metals prices. He's talking about interest rates. As can be seen plainly in the 1970s, the most bullish times for precious metals. Precious metals and rates moved together. And, you know, I was thinking about this, the current setup that we're in today. The current setup is an energy crisis paired with an increasing interest rate environment. It's the same environment that was in the 70s. Energy crisis in the beginning, higher rates and liquidity coming into the system. Back then, there is a difference though. There's a big difference. Back then, we were in an energy crisis because in 1970, we hit peak oil in the United States. But the world still had capacity of oil. Today, we're hitting, which potentially could be <clears throat> peak oil of the entire world. And what this could potentially mean is that we're going to have a much larger impact to the world and that silver and gold would not be playing just by the United States, but is being playing, played by the entire world and in an energy crisis, which includes the entire world. This, is, this could be a much, much bigger move out of gold and silver if the world is playing it and not just the United States. We've got <clears throat> Berkshire Hathaway owns 18.7% of Occidental after new 12 million share purchase. This is Buffett buys oil and gas stocks. He's still buying it. He's still long. Uh, did you know that the Fed simply follows the U.S. two-year rate 
when they determine the Fed's fund rate. If you're curious about Fed futures decisions, just look at the U.S. two-year. No need to try and guess. And the U.S. two-year has been heading higher. More than likely, the Fed fund rate is going to go higher, just like the U.S. 02 uh, two-year treasury. That's a pretty cool chart. I really do like that one. Uh, it says, I'm sorry if Buffett said it. I don't know how you argue. <clears throat> so let's look at what he has to say. We've long felt that the only value of stock forecasters is to make fortune tellers look good. Even now, Charlie and I continue to believe that short-term market forecasts are poison and should be kept locked up in a safe place, away from children and also away from grown-ups who behave in the market like children. I like it. We had an oil release. This is the oil build, uh, strategic petro petroleum release, gasoline and distillates draws. Improved implied MoGas demand. Uh, interesting report. And here's the information. Crude oil went up, but I, I think there was 7 million barrels added from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve in this. But we, so we had a 1.2 million barrel build. And there's all of your, you know, Strategic Petroleum Reserve down six six million. Oh, it's a little less than that. L little, uh, <clears throat> a little more build. Uh, next, we've got look at Lumber Roar. Uh, we're where are my housing bears? Glad BTFD is pretty massive size. The U.S. mortgage rates plunged to five point three percent in the biggest drop since two thousand eight. Big drop in mortgage rates. We're also seeing lumber uh, firm up quite a bit. So. Perhaps the housing market isn't dead yet, and the bears will uh, go back into hibernation at some point. Coming on down, uh, API, okay, we already did, went over that. The Citibank piece has so many holes, one could drive an oil sands mining truck through them. That's the holes that he's talking about. City Warren's oil may collapse to $65 a barrel on recession. Uh, he's just saying that you could. there's a lot of uh, holes in that analysis there. Uh, it says, play the long game, folks. Martin Pelletier, uh, Goldman on oil. I agree. I'm playing the long game. I'm going long and staying long in oil, natural gas, and energy in general. Uh, I think that if the liquidity continues to come into the system from the housing market, that we are going to have an increasing interest rate environment. We're an inflationary boom, and that that pressure will remain in the system. It says they will, revenge of the old economy coming soon. And it's talking about oil. People love their iPhone, their Hulu subscription, their Shake Shack. Oil gas equals heating, cooling, steel, cement, fertilizers, plastics. All things that make all things that make modern life possible while keeping an extra three billion people alive. The general population has zero appreciation for. None. And guess what? That appreciation is going to be coming on back to energy. Here's job openings still way up on in the astronomical zone, up by 55% from May in 2019. This is our thousands of openings seasonally adjusted. Uh, I still find this hard to believe that we have this many job openings, that we have so much um, job opportunities out there, and that we're coming into a recession. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I think that we could have a slowdown, but I don't think it's going to be some blowout recession if a recession is labeled as one. I think it's going to be shallow. I think it's going to be uh, not as bad as what people think. And remember, the housing market, if we're short homes and we're going to have to build a bunch more homes, that is a large driver of job openings. Everything tied to the housing market and construction and, and the things around, the tertiary jobs around all of that. So I still think that we are in a strong market environment and and I don't think that it's going to be some blowout recession but you know what I should I should be re relaxed and reserved and 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 see what the housing market actually does uh, oil and gas stocks are very mispriced Josh Young uh, I was interviewed him this morning he's got a cool little clip if you guys want to add me at finding underscore finance you can look at my uh, tweets and you can watch his oil and gas uh, opinion and get his opinions here. Uh, coming on down, it says, let's blow the myth out of the water, shall we? Rising rates are bad for precious metals. The 1970s were stagflationary, stubbornly high inflation with a weak economy. Sound familiar? It's the same thing. Same thing. It says, I'm going to be shamelessly steal this chart from Luke Groman. You should all subscribe. Look at gold for what happens to prices when the government stops dumping reserves. Now, 
apply this to oil and the SPR. I completely agree here. He's using gold as an example. Uh, basically, they were dumping gold reserves onto the market. And look what happened when they stopped. It went rapidly higher. Uh, or people were depleting their gold reserves. And this is when they stopped, uh, when they could not confiscate, or I should say, when they couldn't convert their money into gold, you could see the gold price really rocket higher. Uh, the same thing is going to happen in oil. When they stop with the uh, strategic, petroleum release, strategic Petroleum Reserve releases, you're going to see a big move in oil. Uh, EU gas prices continue to rise on supply disruptions, Nord Stream 1 and the Freeport LNG fire, and strong Asian demand. Importantly, forward curves during winter peak season continue to move higher. This does not look like a short-lived spike in prices as the two previous spikes. Uh, and these spikes, these two previous spikes here, you can see the forward curves drop. What's happening now uh, when looking out is the gas forward curves on the peaks are, are remaining elevated. So it's, it's not like the two previous peaks before. Uh, you can see that here. This is 21, this is 22, and this is uh, 22, 4773. You can see that the spike, they're, they're still remaining elevated versus what they were before uh, on the short end curve of this curve here. Uh, they're not falling. Uh, in, in 27, so 73, this spike here, you can see it fall dramatically. See this thing fall down? In this one here, you can see this one fall down here quite dramatically in, 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 if you were to overlay it. Uh, the one that we have today, 4.7, is we're remaining elevated all the way out into 2023. It's not falling. So it's a little bit different than what we had uh, from before and other spikes. Uh, U.S. issues with natural gas prices have not been permanently solved. Prices are only lower due to the explosion of Freeport LNG facility, which means that 20% of U.S. LNG exports are now offline for foreseeable future. There seems to be plenty of commentar commentary ignoring this. This here is an opportunity, guys. This Freeport LNG facility being down and 20% of the U.S. LNG exports offline is an opportunity to buy U.S. natural gas. And once this goes back up later in 2022, I think that uh, U.S. natural gas prices will go up and European prices will go down. Uh, that is the opportunity. That, I think, has a high degree of happening. A, a, it's, it's, it's a high probability of U.S. natural gas prices going up towards the end of this year coming into the winter season, too. I think that's a, a, a huge thing that people are maybe missing. And I, I also posted here the European natural gas charts. Uh, they're going ballistic here. Look at this thing going up on the right-hand side. They're going up at the same time that we're going down because of that Freeport uh, LNG uh, problem. So I think getting long American natural gas uh, soon here, uh, we might have one last pullback, but soon I think is a huge opportunity. If you guys want to know what, what companies I'm playing, uh, we discussed it in our platinum membership question and answer session coming up this weekend. If you want to see the companies that uh, we are going into and what I have a high degree of, of exposure to, uh, you can join the platinum membership in the description link below uh, and you can become a member and see what how we're playing all this natural gas in America. A lot of highly leveraged companies that I think could do quite well. Uh, natural gas and energy crisis. Goldman sees European natural gas prices doubling in 2023, and that's tied to the Freeport LNG facility going down. So the situation here is natural gas prices could drastically go up in Europe. Once that LNG comes back online in the second half of the year, we could see a large move higher in American natural gas. Uh, and I don't know what European gas will necessarily do. Maybe it'll come back a little bit, but uh, they've got problems over there. And the linkage to us are those liquefied natural gas terminals that links American natural gas and European natural gas together. Uh, not completely, but it links us as much as we can. We've got, uh, yeah, I'll kind of skip through this. <laughs> I thought this was kind of funny. It says European energy market update. Uh, it says high costs, low reliability. And he goes, did you just take both pills? <laughs> I just thought that was funny. 
um, coming on down. Uh, the crude market is not healthy. Prompt Brent spread traded 80 cents per barrel range today, back over $4 as of this writing. I'm growing increasingly concerned with the capital allocation decisions of the markets. We have major energy scarcity issues that are grossly unresolved. I agree. We do. And I think the, the opportunity here is undervalued oil and natural gas companies. We've got the Freeport LNG facility down. We've got oil that doesn't make much sense of how it's trading. And we've had a couple of people say this in the Twitter saying, what the heck's going on here? Uh, and our scarcity and, and energy is like ridiculously low. So this is a huge opportunity to be looking at oil and natural gas, in my opinion. Uh, it says, no, there's no commodity bubble as many in the Wall Street media want you to believe. In fact, commodities aren't overpriced in, re in, real, in relative value. This is how a, how a correction in an overcrowded positioning. The next leg will start when the greenback tops and topping it will. Just wait. Uh, I agree. And I've been waiting for that dollar to top and go down and then commodities are going to go ballistic. That's what I think. Uh, we're just in this short-term pullback that's going on and it's an opportunity. Another one I thought was incredibly funny uh, is this. <laughs> Diamond balls. <laughs> it's all the uh, uranium um, one's going here, and he's uh, <clears throat> obviously taking it. <laughs> Encore and Global Atomic, it's it's funny. Um, silver blew it out of park yesterday, selling almost 138,000 ounces, which was 221% of, uh, of the average. Gold sold almost 3,000 ounces, 149% of the average. Looks like the people are buying physical when it's coming down. Uh, that's great. Good uh, silver squeeze there. Um, it says, I, I like this actually, maybe I'm too biased. Well, let's know your thoughts. And what this is, is your gold. Uh, so this is silver to the 10 year. And we're right there at the bottom. Good time to be potentially buying. And he's got a one, uh, one to five wave correction here. And maybe this correction's done in gold and silver. That one's silver. Uh, gold is here. We're coming on up and we're right there at that same position where we could be, we could be picking up. Uh, physical metals for a good price. <clears throat> uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. I'll stop it there. Uh, again, I still think natural gas and energy are a great spot to be. I think the companies are undervalued. I think that we've got a great opportunity here in the short term to go on up in the, by the end of this year. Uh, so short, short term, we may go down a little bit more. But overall, I think it's a, a good spot to be looking for natural gas and oil and a lot of these other energy companies. And even, you know, I like the physical metals quite a bit. You know, the, the mining companies, I'm not as much as a bull on. Uh, in some of the mining companies, I do like, because of the XAU to gold ratio, uh, we need to see that break out. If that breaks out, I will become an ultra bull. But right now, I got to see that XAU to gold ratio break that downtrend. And we just haven't done that yet. But that's what I've got for today. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website below. Platinum membership is the membership you want if you want to know what I'm buying and how I'm positioning. Lots of information on that website as well for financial education. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.